Welcome to this Zentangle Quickie. My name is Heather Hartwick Gladden. I'm a certified Zentangle teacher. And today we're going to take a look at the tangle Kaylisi from Sharon Robinson. Now, I am um, uh, interesting story behind this tangle. You can read it on the For More Inspiration link. Click there. You'll see uh, Sharon's uh, step out her samples and if you keep scrolling down there are some uh some other ideas well variations on on uh you know how you could decorate and use this tangle it uh it has uh, she talks about game of thrones i i have not it's not something that i watch so um but it's an, if you watch it interesting connection and um and it's just it's rather neat it, it's a neat tangle regardless so it starts off Similar to how some other ones have started, uh, one in particular that uh, I think I have a video on it called Scrolled Feather. And one of the things that that uh, Linda Farmer, who is, uh, who is TanglePatterns.com, mentions is uh, in these, in the setup for Kay Lisi, it's similar to Scrolled Feather. And what she had found on that one, and I found the same thing, for me it was easier to draw it upside down from you know what the step out shows so i'm going to do that here and do a little bit of shifting with the tangle just so that way my hands comfortable because that is the name of the game all right now it doesn't matter which to which direction that you start i am going to i'm just going to start this way where it's comfortable so coming from the bottom of wherever we're just going to draw Kind of a straightish curved line, and I'm always making these too big, that ends up in a spiral. Okay. Then, actually, this is opposite, I think, than what I was doing on my step out. That's okay. That makes it extra fun. So, from the middle, you know, looking at just this length, from the middle ish of it, we're going to tee off. I guess I'm drawing mine more sideways. Which is all good and honestly oh and from looking looking at it i think it helps to have them go up a little higher so i'm going to aim for that on this one maybe a little smaller there we go i think that that will help but you know you as you try it you'll play with it you will have fun at least i hope you will have fun <laughs> but you know what is fun about all what all tangles is that we do put our own spin on it it's like it's like handwriting you know we all learn how to write letters uh whether it be cursive or or not and we all add our little flair to it and it kind of tangling is kind of like that as well all right so this structure can go up as far as you want it honestly it, it could turn to one side it could turn to another side that is completely up to you the next step is you see where we have these these little corners from where they te these things tear off, right? So I'm going to turn my tile. and Oh, and this is a nice one to do because it's nice and clear. Um, so what we're going to do is I'm going to kind of subdivide this space with a little curve line like so. And then divide it here again. Divide it here. I noticed that a lot of hers, she had four uh, things coming out. I'm going to... Do whatever fits for you. Um, this one, because it's also sort of a partial, that doesn't help. So I'm just going to do this side all at once, or yeah, at first. And this side consists of just these two. <laughs> now, one thing um, that I want to mention is these curly cues, and how are we going to deal with them? Now, this one, oh, it looks like, so I'm going to use the hollow technique. I, I almost didn't have to. I could have probably traced over it, but because it was there um, in just barely under, I went ahead and used the hollow bow technique. If you don't know what that is, um, it is, it's the art of drawing behind. That's what I call it. And you know what, let me, I'm going to draw one more and I'm going to go through this place. So I'm going to sort of subdivide down here. And so if you just watch, because we, well, let me explain. You pick up your pen instead of going over, where it's going to collide, pick up your pen, travel it across what, you know, what you don't want to go over, put it down on the other side, and then continue. So it goes like this. 
And if you think of it in one stroke, it really helps for uh, the continuity of it for that line, because then it's, you know, very um, convincing is the word that I like. <laughs> and I think I'm going to try to put two, two lines up here. Again, this is, a, you know, definitely like everything. It is definitely up to you. Now, I'm going to turn, oh, I'm going to turn it this way. And the reason I'm turning it this way, if, you, if this is the first video you've watched or I've not said it yet um, on ones that you have watched, with Zentangle, what we like to do is, you know, put your hand down, the heel of your hand on your, your table, and then we use the natural curve. So a lot of times what I like to do is utilize that for consistency of the curve. And that's why I'm always shifting the tiles here. And you know what? And it doesn't it doesn't hurt to air draw a little bit, so that way you see where you're going, and then it's just turn the tile <laughs> instead of moving your hand. And so right here, I am going to go across because that's okay. It's you know, um, I, I I like having the gap here. Here, you know, it's kind of like well, I could stop it, but then that's just kind of weird. And I think I'm going to go ahead and let's do, oh, no, I'm going to just leave it like that. Because here on this little partial, I can come out. I can do two. Ooh, maybe. Yeah, there we go. Okay. And some of this I have found also is remembering where am I coming out? Because I was tempted to go, oh, here, nope, not there. This one, where... It, this one because <laughs> I'm like nope that's where it tees off this way this way it's coming but it's helpful to just remember and let's see I think oh and what the heck let's do a little Another thing is they don't necessarily have to be in any, um, as you can see, uh, the lengths are all kind of weird. And that's that's okay. You can also have fun with it. Okay, so I have them all done. Actually, they kind of look like swans, don't they? All right, the next step then is just some curve lines in between these spokes. So I'm going to go here. And this one is going to go off the page and here and then the last one we'll have it just kind of merge you know into into this to the the initial stroke with the spiral and i, I was pressing on my pen a little bit so it made them a little bit thick which is nice because the last step you know before shading is is you know you can thicken these and you could do it as you go if you want it's up to you To play with it and then I'm also going to uh, say that I'm thinking you could have even extra fun with these if you want to uh, with decorating but do take a look at the for more inspiration link to get some you know if you need ideas or it's just nice to see what uh, what Sharon has done with this I should have thickened that one while I was already over there But so I uh, don't want to give any spoilers. So, so you can go ahead and read what Sharon has written about uh, her inspiration. But, you know, the, uh, Dragon Wings is the is the inspiration. So and you can see how that how that definitely can look like that. If we were doing this around Halloween time, they could be bat wings. <laughs> Although I suppose dragon wings could work for that. Uh, Time of year also and I'm just thickening them overall it seemed like in Sharon's step out it was more like a dip I just can't seem to get that maybe a little bit like that basically it what I think it oops 
there. <laughs> what I think is so interesting with this, and you know what? Let's just because let's it, it just feels not right over here. Let's uh, we'll have one kind of going off the page. There we go. Um, what I find so interesting about this is that while it starts off with you know everything being connected right by that that first step Ooh, let's do one that goes like that um when you finish it it looks like they look like separate things and it's just like oh that's that's just rather neat there was another one and i was i i didn't look up the name yet we did it gosh a while ago and it had a it had a similar look and um just yeah just super neat so then you can have fun decorating it we'll just let's just do some simple shading on it though and that would be oh yeah she does give some uh, it just looking back different ideas of things that you could do you could fill in some of these you could probably decorate them if you wanted to with some other tangles like orbs or straight lines things like that really really neat okay pencil yes <laughs> oh there it is okay so here's some thoughts number one where everything converges is always a great idea to add some graphite oh let's see this last one's like that doesn't look Quite right because like here there's there's a nice gap well I was because I was just filling fitting those in like that doesn't look quite normal actually I kind of like the way that looks I suppose if I hadn't done this last one to make that look connected but that hmm, I might have to explore that thought some more um hmm you know it's like here so i having lots of thoughts but because this is small i don't know if it'll work or not hmm well let's just let's do it on here And I, yes, I was whispering to myself, saying, which one, which one? Sometimes if I move my face too far away from the mic, then it doesn't pick me up. But that time I was just muttering to myself. <laughs> oh, see, that looks kind of neat. So you can lightly put graphite on one side. And then, and being very careful. If you have a maybe a newer tortillon or something that has more of a finer tip, I'm just kind of going light. And then also I have another thought with that. Because we just want to create a little gradient to give the impression. Oh, you know, too, could it could have just put it maybe on the line so that way it would go out both directions. There's that's always a thought. Then, I see that I'm not really doing anything with that, that last one, but that's okay. And just a little bit of a back and forth motion instead of you know, little circles, even if they're small circles, I just want it to move, but not too far in because we need to have some of that original tile color there for the effect. And then I have one additional thought. Gosh, that looks neat. You know, shading is just magic. It really, really is. Okay, and because these are in front, kind of show that 
by putting some graphite oh, around like that. I'm sorry. It just it it's it never gets old seeing the magic that the shading does. It really for me never gets old. It's so cool. And again, this is but one way to have fun with this. <laughs> yeah. Ugh, totally neat. And then if you want to add a little, you know, like drop shadowy type thing. Sometimes it's a really great way to... <laughs> to use what's on your tortillon, I'm going to dim my light a little bit so that way you can see that it's not very much there. <laughs> I was looking at this thinking it was cool, and now it's like, wow. Neat, neat. Yep, like it. Okay, super cool. I'm almost thinking, just looking. To, and this is just a thought. So the, mine, it's a hindsight, is to not have, like, I think this looks cooler because I, I don't have a line going through it where these ones, you know, I went through. And maybe there's a different way that I would want to shade that so it doesn't, you know, so it's it doesn't look weird. But I'm thinking, you know, just aiming them so that way maybe you go, the lowest you go is like right here, right at the edge of the, sp the first spiral. So that way you can, that way it makes sense to hollabow it, on, you know, uh, you know, through. Where here, it doesn't make sense because it's like, well, I can stop here, but why? That That's just kind of weird and, you know, silly. So anyway, it, it was like, it still looks really neat, but in hindsight, it's like, oh, if I, next, next time I do this one, I think I'm going to, I will plan a little bit better, at least as far as, oh, and heck, maybe start there. So like when we're doing that first, the first thing, instead of, you know, dividing what looks like the space, start this way. It's like an aim for wherever the bottom is. And then that becomes your space that then you could then subdivide until you have enough, um, you know, curve lines in there that you want. Just a thought. All right. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. This is a, this is a cool tangle. And, uh, it, you know, it could be used as a, as a feature tangle or, um, you could probably use it as a border, I would suppose too. I mean, you might have, it, be, it might be a big border, although you could probably do it, uh, a little bit smaller so where it's tighter together, but, uh, up to you. Really neat. So again, hope you enjoyed it. If you did, would love to have you click the like button. Also feel free to share it, leave comments. And if you liked it enough to see more, would love to have you be a subscriber to the channel. Um, I mentioned the description section. I always do my own version of the step out. So that will be there in the description as well as um, the for more inspiration link is always to the originator of the tangle. <clears throat> then below that, ways to connect with me. So if you enjoyed this and you think, gosh, it'd be really fun to do like a live session um with heather and friends we would love to have you join us <laughs> so i teach almost twice weekly it just depends on the week tuesdays and thursdays my time it depends on where you're at um i say that because we do have some people from australia that join us on the calls it's usually on what i call the pm call and so it's always the next day there and it's just fun well actually no no we have some others that just depends on when sometimes it's the next day so uh, so do take a look. I, I on my website, there um there are ways to follow me. Um, I use Eventbrite and Meetup.com and Facebook. And when you see those, it always then converts it to your time zone. I think I put the Time Buddy link on. I'll have to double check that on the classes page on my site, just so that way you could convert it. Because on my site, it's not going to convert it for you. Um, and that's why I just wanted to make sure to mention that. Would love to have you join us. I have some that are free. A lot of them are free, actually. I have a couple uh, a month that are paid classes, so that way I can, you know, keep the lights on and whatnot. 
And uh, we have a fun time. We're also on, uh, we have a nice group on Facebook. It's a private group. And there's a couple of uh, questions to answer, remember, to, to get in the door. Would love to have you join us if you happen to be on Facebook. So with that, thanks so much for watching. And I wish you happy tangling.